of mine. I really believe that my generation hasn't done such a hot job of raising self-reliant children. And so now our children are in their 20s and uh, they don't know a lot about being self-reliant. So this is an important topic to me. I, this all started, um, okay, except I'm not advancing. Okay, Ron. <laughs> I can't get my thing to work. Um, I'll tell you while he plays with this. It won't advance. Um, this started several years ago when I was teaching a class to 12 and 13 year old girls. And, okay, okay, was this before? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, got it. We got it down. Okay, um, I was teaching 12 and 13 year old girls, and their concern to me was I don't remember what the topic was, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about at the time, but they asked me the question, How am I ever going to be a good grandma? And I looked at them, I was so confused as to what in the world they meant by that. And they explained to me that they didn't think they would ever be a good grandma because they didn't know how to cook, they didn't know how to knit. They didn't know how to do anything their grandmas knew how to do. And that was my first kind of, I guess, little wake-up call that maybe there were some things that we were lacking as far as teaching our children and things that just were so common to us when we were growing up that everybody did. And now it just seemed that we were getting away from them. The second thing was that I'm a home economics teacher. And home economics teachers are kind of the dinosaurs now in the education field. And so many programs in schools now have eliminated shop and home ec and auto and all those kinds of things. And so where do our children learn them? If they don't learn them from us, where are our children learning to be self-reliant? So, whoops, wrong way. There we go. All right. So I have a few things that are just suggestions to you of places that where, where you can begin. The other real big concern that I have that I think a lot of people have that's kind of coming to a forefront now, and there's been a lot of discussion in the media about it lately, is just this, this self, um, self-absorbed kind of generation, the entitlement generation that we've raised, that all kids think now that they're so entitled to everything. And, you know, well, mom and dad will pay for that, or will the government will take care of me or something. And that just isn't, as we can see the economy getting worse and worse, and China taking over more and more, and all these things happening, and disasters and terrorism and everything that's going on. I think we realize that we have to help get away from that entitlement mentality. And the best way to do that, I, I believe the best way to do that is to teach our children to have self-esteem, to teach them that it feels good to be successful. And when you have that feeling that you're successful, then all of a sudden you don't want somebody to give you anything because it feels so much better when you work for it. So these are kinds of a few tips on things that you might be able to do and by the way, I have handouts over on my booth. It's 109 over there where I have handouts on this. So if you'd like a handout, um, run over to the booth afterwards and, and we'll just give you one. Um, so the first thing is to teach your children how to fix a meal, to fix a balanced meal. When my daughter had her last baby, she was on bed rest, so I went and moved in with them. And I gave my uh, grandson the assignment of fixing his own lunch to take to school every day. And that was a real eye-opener because he didn't know how to do that. So we made a little chart for him, and we cut out pictures of vegetables and pictures of meats and pictures of dairy and things like that, all the food groups. And he knew he had to have something from every food group in his lunch sack every day, and he learned to make his own lunch. And it was huge. It was just eye-opening to my daughter that he could actually do that. But now, when you talk to him now, and it's several years later, he will tell you, but, oh, we're missing a vegetable. What's the vegetable for dinner? He's learned how important it is nutritionally to have a balanced meal, 
and he's learned, he's learned it from an early age, so now it's just so part of who he is that he wouldn't even consider eating a meal without having all the food groups in it. The other thing that's important when we're talking about fixing meals is to let our children know that color counts, which makes things a lot more fun for them anyway. So if we have um, chicken, which is kind of white, yellow, you know, then you want an orange, a red, a blue, a green. You want other colors on your plate. The more colors you have on your plate, the more nutritionally balanced your meal is. And that's easy for kids to understand. And it's fun for them. You know, when you say, well, we need a green, and you let them go and get the green beans or run to the freezer and get peas or run and get spinach for salad, but help them to understand that color counts. Okay. Cool. Worked. <laughs> okay. The next thing is, now that they know how to kind of balance a menu, the next thing would be to teach them how to cook. And this, is, this can be, to me, this is really a fun, fun thing. Um, teach them how to make family meals, and they can be simple meals that the whole family will eat. And again, this builds self-esteem. You know, when your children do something and then you rave and rave and rave about it. Remember the first time that your children learned to tie their shoes and how excited they were? Well, that builds self-esteem. Every little tiny skill they learn builds their self-esteem. So as they get to more difficult things later on in their life, they have the confidence to tackle them. And that confidence is what makes us self-reliant. So teach them to fix family meals. And you can start with things like pancakes. Pancakes are really simple things. And then, of course, how do we balance this? You know, what, what do we drink with it? Well, that could be our dairy or it could be our fruit that we drink with it. So all kinds of builds, builds on each other. The next thing is to learn to bake. Baking is another skill that's really very simple to learn. And it doesn't have to be complicated, even if it's from a mix. It, teach them the skill. Teach them how to bake. I learned how to bake from my grandfather, whose father was a baker. And we did all kinds of fun things. And we did traditional cookies, Christmas cookies. Every year I would bake Christmas cookies with my papa. And we gave them as Christmas gifts to everyone. And I still bake those same Christmas cookies. So it's become a family tradition. But it also gave me the self-confidence to go on and do other things. Uh, okay, outdoor cooking. Outdoor cooking is so much fun and it's perfect, perfect way to teach kids to cook because it's so different and so unique. And you can do simple things. If you take a biscuit mix, any good biscuit mix that will hold together, if it's too crumbly, it doesn't work, but a good biscuit mix that holds together, if you get a dowel, wider is better if it's a little wider, like an inch, inch and a half dowel, and wrap the dowel with biscuit, soak the dowel in water, wrap the dowel with biscuit mix and hold it over a fire like you would marshmallows, it will bake the biscuit. Well, that's really fun for kids. And then you can fill it with jam or stew or all kinds of things. So it's a fun way for kids to learn to cook foil dinners, Dutch oven cooking. But you're not only teaching them to cook, you're teaching them, when you cook like that, to survive without electricity. So that is a self-reliant skill. Once they know how to regulate a Dutch oven, they know how to make a foil dinner, they can cook if there's no electricity. So they're, they're learning to be self-reliant. OK. Chores. <laughs> I, I, this one was hard. When my kids were growing up, it was like, why do we have to do that? You know, like nobody had chores. But that's a great myth. Of course, we all know that everyone should have chores. If they don't, then I feel sorry for kids that don't have chores because they are not learning basic skills and they're not, they're not going to build their self-confidence. You know, it's when you learn to do things that you build your self-confidence. So chores are important. It's important that their children understand what their jobs are. And we had chore charts in our family, and I'm sure you've all been through the chore charts in your family. And it changed every three or four months because they'd get bored. So we'd have to come up with a new strategy for chores. But children should know what their jobs are, and they should be outlined in some kind of a way that they can check them off when they're done. And mom can go, and dad can go, and, and be 
so excited and brag about how the kids got their chores all done. So some way to record it. Then there has to be, you do your job. You go and you do your job. And of course, as parents, depending on the age of your children, you are going to say the jobs are done perfectly. And then you're going to go back when they're not home and you're going to finish them. But, you know, as they grow older, you can say, no, you missed that. You know, but, as, but when they're very young, then it's like, oh, that's so great. You know, it has to be age appropriate. But they should have to return and report. Do their job, come back, and report. And this not only teaches them to do, you know, common household things that they're going to have to do the rest of their lives, but it also deals, teaches them how to deal with a boss. They have a chore at work. They do their chore, they return and report. So you're teaching self-reliance skills, not only how to clean your house, but you're teaching them what the, the job market is all about, what the job world is all about. You're teaching them what school is all about. In school, you have a job, you have an assignment, you go and you do it, you return and you report. So it's a skill that carries over in so many areas of their lives. And when kids don't learn this process, then they're missing that part of their lives. They're missing that self-reliance part. They don't understand then why they're given a job at work and they don't get it done that day. And well, why couldn't it wait till tomorrow? I think it's okay if it wait till tomorrow. So they learn through this process all kinds of respons responsibility in all areas, not just in doing chores. Okay, laundry. Kids should do their own laundry. They really should. I taught a home ec class one time, and it was called, um, oh, no, I can't remember. It was living on your own is what it was. And so we taught a lot of different basic skills, and one of the skills, I spent a week doing laundry. And I stained things, and I brought them in, and, and we practiced, you know, okay, we're going to do this to the stain. Will it get it out? And we did that for a week. I thought they were going to be, I thought they were going to die. But at the end of the week, the most unlikely boy in the entire class, the one who took it for the easy A, long hair down his back, you know, big partier, I, just not at all the person you would expect to appreciate this, was the one who came and told me how much money I had just saved him. Because he realized that for the first time he understood that when he bought something, and this kid was from very poor circumstances, and he did buy all of his own clothes, and he had a really rough life. He was a good kid, but he was making some poor choices. But he was the one who came and said, you know, now I won't throw my clothes away. Now I know how to make the most of the clothes I have. Now I know how to clean them. It seemed like such a silly thing logical thing to me, but to him, it was huge and eye-opening and, again, self-reliant. When we're talking about self-reliance, we're talking about how can we make the most of that dollar. And every time we throw something away, instead of repairing it, every time we have to replace it, we're not making the most of that dollar. So this, that's how this relates to self-reliance. Um, also, when children learn to do their own laundry and to be clean and to iron their clothes or whatever it is, they're also learning the other skill of being able to present themselves well. I was on a committee where we interviewed kids for um, scholarships <laughs> um, at, for high school kids. We interviewed them for scholarships. And I can tell you that the scholarship committee, when... The kids came in dressed well and sat, you know, quietly and were, paid attention and their hair was well groomed. Those were the kids that we usually favored when it came to scholarships. And that is very sad to say, but it's just a fact of life. You just, when people present themselves well in a job interview or in a situation like that, you have confidence that they'll be able to handle what you're giving them, the job or the money that they'll spend it well and they'll handle it well. So it accomplishes a lot of different goals. Teach your kids to do the laundry. All right. 
Teach your children to grow something. Now, there's all kinds of people here today who can help you to learn to grow if you don't know how to grow. I have, um, I have a Yahoo group, and in my Yahoo group, people ask questions about all, all aspects of emergency preparedness. And one person was talking about growing their own food. And now that it's getting to be winter, we we're talking about, okay, well, what do we need to do to prepare for next year and this kind of thing. And one of the women wrote in and said, Next year, I grow lettuce year-round in my bathroom window. And the point being that gardens don't have to be just for the summertime. There are things that we can grow all year round. And kids will eat what they grow. It's amazing. I taught an a, um, after-school class in an elementary school. And we, had, we planted a garden. And I was teaching a cooking class. And you know what? If they had grown it in the garden, they would try it. And it didn't matter what it was or how strange it looked or how unfamiliar they were at home with the food. If they had grown it in the garden, they tried it. So it's really worth getting your kids. You can do it in, you know, big plots, just in, uh, on a windowsill, um, in pots. There's all kinds of things you can grow. And things grow really quickly. The great thing about this, when we're talking about self-reliance, again, trying to bring this back to self-reliance, is a lot of things will grow in as short as 10 days to three months. So if you have a food supply at home and something disastrous happens, you can, um, you can eat what you have at home, and by the time you've eaten your three months supply of the foods you normally eat, at home, the time you've eaten that, your garden has grown. And so now you can supplement again. And so it's an important skill that way for children to learn. And, and it also really it will help their nutrition, I promise you. They'll, they'll eat much better. Okay. Sewing skills. This is one. That, this is another one that's kind of a dinosaur. You know, it's kind of getting to be a lost art, which is so sad to me. But it's, it's such an important skill to know how to do. Right now, where we are right now in time, if you go out and you buy a pattern and you buy fabric and you make clothes for your kids, it's way more expensive than going to Kmart. So, you know, it's not a good time right now to be making clothes. But the skill is what's important. The skill is important because there are maybe times in the future when y your children are married, in college, whatever the situation may be, or maybe when they're still at home with you, that you can't afford to buy clothes. But kids grow, and they need clothes. And so do you know, and would they know, how to take your clothes and cut them down and make something for themselves? Or would they know how to take old clothes and sew them together and make a quilt? or those, those kinds of skills. I have a son, and the first one here is it's not just for women anymore. I have a son who was in college, and he wanted knee-length shorts, and he could not find knee-length shorts anywhere. And so to my absolute total amazement, he made shorts. I was shocked. He found one of the girls at school who had a sewing machine, and she helped him make shorts that were knee-length. And I, I was shocked. He didn't tell me until after they were done. When I was doing my student teaching, I did my student teaching in Iowa. And in Iowa, they dismiss schools the first two days of hunting season. And so it's a big hunting place. And I think they used to do that in Utah. I don't know if they still do. But they used to get out for the first day of the hunt in Utah, too. But in Iowa, they do. And it was really funny because I, I went to this junior high school to do my student teaching, and I was told I had a class of boys for sewing. And I was absolutely amazed. I thought, what in the world am I going to do with a class of boys? We made hunting vests. We made bright orange hunting vests, and they were so thrilled, and they felt so proud. And, so good. and these are seventh and eighth grade boys, so you know this is an awkward age. But they were so proud of those hunting vests, and they showed them off to everybody they knew because it was something that related to them that they could use. 
And, you know, we just don't know what the future holds and whether or not it's our sons or our daughters or both who are going to need the skills. So it's always good, even if you just start with the needle and thread and this is how you sew on a button and this is how you take in a seam, just, this is how you hem a hem, just simple things like that. It's, it's really an important skill. And, again, it goes back to, to the whole idea of self-esteem and having another skill that they can say they know how to do. When somebody gets in trouble in the dorm in college and they split a seam, if your son's the one who says, ah, I can fix that, you know, it's great. Okay. Car maintenance. Okay. This one, I have to say, is not just for men anymore. <laughs> um, all of our children need to do, wow, that half hour went fast. You have to come get the handout for the rest. Um, it's not just your, the guys in your life who you need to ch learn to change a tire. Everyone needs to learn to change a tire. Adding fuels, fluids to your car, making sure that the oil and all that kind of stuff. Tire pressures, jumping a battery. I do have a quick story about this one, though. I have a daughter who took our old clunker to college. And so we had kind of given her some basic, you know, things to check if things seem to be going wrong. And one day, she went with a group, not in her car, went with a group out on an outing. I think they were actually up in, um, at Temp or something. They were here. She was going to school here. And, um, and they went back to the car, and the car wouldn't start. And the guys all couldn't figure out what was wrong. And so Amy said, well, let me try something. So she gets in there. She wiggles a couple things with the battery, and car starts. And the boys were absolutely shocked that she figured out what was wrong with the car when they couldn't. So it's important for your girls, too, to figure it out because you never know when they're going to be alone. And I, I just finished writing a book about that's meant to put in your glove box with all kinds of guidelines for things to do in your car. And somebody said to me, I've got a cell phone. I'll just use my cell phone. The problem is that if you have ever driven here, driven very far from the valley, cell phones don't always work. And so if you're driving across Nevada or down to St. George, and there's all kinds of places cell phones don't work. So teach your kids basic car maintenance skills. We'll go through these fast. Okay, teach your children how to shut off the utilities. Really, really important. Living here in Utah, and I'm assuming most of you are from Utah. Um, living here, you are on an earthquake fault that is ready to go. And when it goes, it's going to go big time because it's been a long time since you've had a good one here. And you're due. So what happens if you're not home? If you're not home, do your kids know how to do these things? Do your kids know how to shut off the electricity to the house, how to shut off the water to the house, and how to shut off the gas to the house? Really important after an earthquake. Living in California, I live in earthquake country, this is so important that they know how to do these things. Really important. Um, and you can teach them in their special wrenches so it's not extremely difficult. Now, little kids couldn't do it, but your teenagers for sure should all know how to do this. Okay. <laughs> this one, you remember this show? Um, tool, teach your children how to use basic tools. Do they know how to use a screwdriver, to use a handsaw, to use basic tools? Remember, after an emergency, in most cases, again, especially in Utah, talking about earthquakes, there is not going to be electricity. I, I'm doing a um, presentation tomorrow, and so I don't have the exact facts around my thing for tomorrow. But they expect over 30,000 households on the front here, on Wasatch Front, 30,000 households to be without electricity for 30 days or more after the earthquake. So, can you use tools? Do you know how to use tools that are not electric tools? You know, hand saws, those kinds of things. Important skill. Okay, budgeting. Um, give your children the opportunity to earn money. Our children started buying all their own clothes when they were 12. And, but we gave them chores that paid at home or they got to go mow the neighbor's lawn or something like that. But it taught them self-reliance. It taught them to be responsible. And they wanted to get the stains out of their laundry because they had to pay to replace it. So it's just kind of a cycle. Um, teaches responsibility. And the most important thing is it will teach them to determine the difference between their needs and their wants. And that 
we're talking self-reliance, that is huge for all of us as adults to know what's a need and what to want. Okay. <laughs> I thought there was one more slide. Anyway. Okay. That was really quick, but my time is up. So I'm sorry. I kind of ran through those last ones really fast. But if you have any questions, I am in booth 109, and I do have handouts. And so if you want to stop by there and get the handout. Um, is there any, any question? Quick? They can think of? All right, any comments? I can't hear. Oh, um, actually, it's yahoo.totallyready. So, but um, if you stop by my booth, I have a card there, and it's got my blog on it. And there's a link on the blog. That's the fastest way to get there. So the Yahoo group is really fun. We've got a lot of people who have been into prepping for a long time and have terrific ideas. And they're all over the world, which is really fun. When you hear from people in Australia who have a totally different take on things, it's really fun. So, yeah. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Well, thank you.